uh, as long as the vaccines continue to work, we're coming out of it. Okay. All right. I have uh, conveyed to uh, Dr. Salim sir about your screen sharing. So you want yes, to sir, share the screen? I think uh, you can do that. Sir. You will do, sir. We are just waiting for one or two minutes to. Uh, it's the... still it's still disabled. I can't share my screen. Sir, uh, sir someone sir, someone needs to make me a co-host. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are doing. It. Sir, we will do some uh, uh, wel uh, a welcome address and then we will give you the host credentials. Okay, no problem. If you make me a co-host now, that will be, that may speed it up. Sure, sir, sure. Mukesh, sir, kindly uh, take the host and then make, sir, a co-host. Mukesh, sir. Okay, sir, kindly do. I have made you the host. Okay, sir, have you done? Uh, yeah, I'm still, still I'm disabled. It. Yeah, I'm doing it, sir. I'm doing it. Right. Uh, sir, sir is host now. Right, right, right. Do we uh, start now, sir? I think it's time already. Right, sir. Let and me because let anyway, uh, Andrew has to leave by three fifteen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let, oh, let yeah. me. Good afternoon and welcome everyone to our afternoon session, third session of uh, uh, mediation negotiation workshop and mock mediation session uh, of the SK Mishra Memorial International Mediation and Negotiation Competition 2.0. Uh, we all welcome our participants and all of us participants and uh, our faculty members, myself and Samir sir, we all welcome Mr. Andrew Miller to the third session today. Uh, Andrew sir will be talking about online mediation tools and techniques and he will share his experience. He will share the knowledge and experience that he has gained with all the participants, all the uh, non-participating uh, competition, non-competition non participating uh, uh, people who are here in the workshop with us. Uh, we all welcome you. Uh, I would request my team member, Ms. Uh, Pallavi, to kindly uh, welcome our guest. Ms. Pallavi. Thank you, sir. A very good afternoon to one and all present over here. I am Pallavi Shukla. It gives me immense pleasure to invite Mr. Andrew Miller, Queen's Counsel. He is a NMA Civil Criminal Mediator of the Year 2020 and 2021 UK, International Mediator and Arbitrator based at 2TG, Panel Mediator on IPOS, CEDR, RICS, President's Panel and M4CI Panel. He is also the Fellow of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators since 1999 and trustee of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, London, United Kingdom. He practices principally as a mediator and arbitrator under using his specialist expertise, using his specialist expertise. Sir, am I audible? 
using his specialist expertise in, com in commercial construction and property damage and professional negligence disputes. After an exceptional 30 years of practice as a top ranked commercial construction and insurance junior barrister and Queen's counsel, Mr. Andrew now practices principally as a QC mediator and arbitrator. Mr. Andrew has been involved in the mediation of disputes since 1996, when he undertook his first mediation in Singapore. He has experience of over 150 mediations and has been involved in mediations, both domestically and internationally, for over 20 years. Mr. Andrew acts as a mediator in a wide range of commercial sectors, including construction, property damage, insurance and reinsurance, professional negligence, and general commercial disputes valued between 10,000 pounds to 35 million pounds. Mr. Andrew has received a glowing feedback and testimonials on his professional performance and skill as a mediator. Mr. Andrew has used his background as a successful QC and junior counsel, commercial practitioner, and his substantial experience of mediation to become a practical, efficient, approachable, and user-friendly mediator. He favors and is a proponent of the active versus passive approach to mediation and is an advocate of early stage mediation and he also practices as a single and panel arbitrator in commercial arbitrations. It is our honor to have you. We welcome you, sir. Thank you so much, Ms. Uh, uh, Pallavi, for welcoming our guest today. I uh, would say to all the participants to uh, make it uh, the most of the time of Mr. Andrew and kindly jot down the things that you find uh, pertaining to be asked to sir and to be uh, and to be noted down and also to uh, make sure that you make the best uh, uh, of the experience of listening to him over to you andrew sir thank you very much indeed thank you for a wonderful introduction uh, it's a real pleasure to to be here uh, and well to be with all of you virtually um, and remotely and online uh, and any of you who were here and just heard me speaking to Samir Shah, um, I'm actually speaking about something that uh, there is a, a huge part of me hopes will be dying out to some extent, not, total, not in total, but to an extent. Um, online mediation, which really has come about because of the, the pandemic, uh, has been quite an amazing thing, an amazing journey, um, uh, but there is nothing like face-to-face -face mediation. Um, I, I, in the one year, I have managed to do two face-to-face -face mediations when things quieten down here a bit in the UK, uh, and you could see that there were things um, that you were missing uh, online, and I'll, I'll, I'll come to that a bit later when I speak. Um, but not, you know, not to put too much of a, a scientific point on it. Face-to-face um, -face is more fun. Um, there's no getting away from it. It's meeting people, it's um, being with them, um, and it's being the social animals that we actually are. Uh, and this living through the screen right now, I can see there's 109 people on, on this webinar, but I can't reach out and shake any of your, your hands uh, or have a chat or have a drink or a cup of tea with any of you. And that, that's really um, you know, a real shame and not normal, but we are where we are and we can only hope that we're starting to, to get out of it. Um, uh, but I, I, we won't lose uh, online, Tiffany. So online mediation. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take through a few, uh, a, a few slides and I'll, I'll try uh, and stop. So there's some time for um, some questions. Uh, unfortunately, I actually have a real online mediation um, starting in 50 minutes, um, hence why I'm, I'm going to have to leave you on time. 
So let's see if my share screen does work. And it looks like it does. Uh, and Hopefully you can see what I can see. The cover slide. Thank you. Okay, so let's start with the the remote mediation story because it's always good to put something in context. Uh, and if we go back, it's almost uh, uh, less about two weeks. I think it was the beginning of March, and I was about to do a mediation, um, some three hours from London, uh, and I got a telephone call from a uh, one of the parties who said to me that their client, um, sorry, the party representative said to me that their client uh, had been advised with their doctor as they, as they had been through um, chemotherapy, uh, that they should not travel um, because there was this thing called COVID around um, and they shouldn't risk their health. And the suggestion was made to me was, why don't we try doing it um, on Skype? Uh, no one was saying the words remote mediation. No one was saying online mediation. Uh, and I said, well, what does the other side think about that? And the other side apparently were completely in favor of, of doing it. Um, but there was one person uh, who thought it was a very bad idea. Um, and that one person was me. Uh, and I um, could not see how we could in fact have a, um, a mediation of the type of dispute it was. It happened to be uh, a boundary dispute. I couldn't see how we could do that uh, on a, um, through the screen. Um, uh, and uh, I had to bow to the, the, the views of everyone else and it went along. And what happened was I would say it was two thirds remote, one third in place because I still went to the location and met people there, but I was meeting with two other people and we hadn't got it finessed at that stage. So we were having to call one and then dial off and call another and we, we used Skype. Didn't even enter our minds at that stage to use Zoom. But something, um, I'd say something happened on that day um, was I realized where I'd been really wrong. Uh, I my feeling about mediation is the very need for the mediator to be able to connect with the parties. And I had not seen that it was going to be possible to have a connection through the lens of a camera, uh, etc. Uh, and now it may sound strange, you know, we're, our lockdown started on March 23rd, 2020. So we're almost one year in. It sounds strange because everything is being done through the, you know, through the lens. Every every type of work, every type of entertainment, uh, every type of family relationship. Uh, and so now, what what did not seem obvious at the time seemed obvious. And there was this ability to have this contact um, through the screen that I saw very much even on that that first occasion. Um, and I started to to see that you actually could get the concentration of individuals, um, sometimes more than you could in a big conference room. Uh, and that was, in, in this particular one, I had to get through to uh, particular two people there who were sharing an iPad um, and did not have their solicitor with them. And the ability I found I had to actually be speaking to them uh, and be, as I'm now, be closer and closer to them in their room, in their living room, was very powerful. And on that day, I, I think was the reason that we, we got a settlement and, uh, and, uh, and got it so efficiently. Um, as I said, and it may ha also have something to do with the fact that their solicitor was not um, sitting, uh, sitting next to them at the time. So what that that's a year ago. I, I have now done uh, about 40 remote mediations in in the last year. Um, and so what you know, what what do I think? So I I, I dug up a slide that um, I hadn't used actually for many years when I was sort of going around and trying to sell 
um, mediation. And, and one of the things I would always talk about is the advantages of mediation. Um, and I, I just put them down. I'm going to sort of run through them because you've probably heard them all and that's not the, the purpose of this talk. But what's held out is always affordability, efficiency, accessibility, flexibility, uh, effectiveness. Uh, and you know, what we have seen is remote mediation um, uh, has continued to achieve all of the above. You know, the, the affordability one, um, I, I've actually now you know, mediated in, uh, as remote mediation, I think it's in, in seven different jurisdictions. Um, and no one's paid my airfare, uh, no one's even paid my lunch, uh, let alone anything else. Um, and so you know, the, the costs have clearly, you know, clearly gone down. The efficiency, uh, what I have noticed more than anything else, because everyone is sitting, um, certainly in the UK, mainly at home, um, is the preparation time has been speeded up, or I should say the booking time um, has speeded up. So. Uh, in the past, if I went back into 2019 uh, I, and I was to review my diary, I think I would find um, that the average was I was booked about three weeks in advance. Uh, it has not been unusual to be booked a matter of days um, in advance for, uh, for these for the remote mediations. Accessible speaks for itself, uh, people sitting in their own homes, uh, huge flexibility. Um, and the effectiveness, um, that's an, an interesting one. Um, I, I personally don't believe in, in advertising any, uh, any figures. The one that's used and it comes from Cedar always, it's 75 to 80% effective. Um, I think it depends very much on the type of mediation. For me, a, a, an effective and successful mediation doesn't mean settling on the day. Um, but I've seen no indication that uh, cases are, are different, but I'll come back to that because I, I think there's certain other things that, um, that, that are, are at play. So what, you know, what, what have we learned from remote mediation going forward? Um, well, th there's been different attitudes. So you had my attitude to start with, which was it's not possible, um, it can't work. And I think that, um, that has generally changed. But um, necessity has sort of become the mother of, of all evil and, and it's almost self-justifying when you can't sit in a room together and the only thing you can do is have remote or online mediation, whatever you're, you're choosing to call it, um, then attitudes have, have tended to be better. I think what has changed is what we had very much at the beginning in the UK, um, was a wait and see attitude, uh, a feeling, and I know I had it at the beginning, um, that this would only be with us for a couple of months and then everything would be back to normal. Um, there was on the other side of that a fear that there were many, many practitioners had, uh, which was, uh, well, if I get rid of everything now, I, in this period, um, I don't know what there's gonna be when we come out of, of lockdown, will I have any work? Uh, and I think that um, that's sort of got dissipated quite quickly. We're now sort of perhaps the other side of it where people are starting to see um, just how much delay there might be in the system in, in the UK. So you know, attitudes have moved. There are some people who simply do not like it um, uh, at all. Uh, and if I was to pick one attitude, um, uh, it, it it's perhaps um, that there is a, a, a feeling of, I don't want to sit in front of a screen all day uh, amongst uh, in, in certain sectors. So for example, I've seen quite a drop off in terms of the amount of insurers who are, are willing to go a whole day and sit there, whereas they would have sat there a whole day in a mediation room. Um, so there, there's been some to, to that. There's been a lot of comparison between the, the two formats, but that's fallen away. Um, for me, one of the one of the things that I personally don't like, and it's with the conversation I was having before we uh, before we started, it is um, I see on LinkedIn, if not every day, certainly every week, people talking about this our new normal should become our normal, um, and I, I just I, I don't agree with that. I I 
Uh, I know I'm, I'm echoing what the chair of Goldman Sachs said the other day, but um, I think it, in essence, you know, it, this cannot be it that people are, are stuck in their living room working for the rest of their life. Um, there is something quite, you know, quite amazing about, about human contact, real human contact. So it, it's going to be interesting when lockdown comes off as to, uh, as to what happens. Um, the behavior of attendees at remote mediation. I mean, I, I, I do commercial mediations. Uh, I, I don't do family mediation. Um, it's very rare. It has happened. Um, I've had one assault take place in a mediation of mine, but that, that's incredibly, uh, incredibly rare. People are normally well behaved. There's sometimes shouting matches, um, but I haven't noticed the behavior difference. What I have noticed, though, is um, people don't realize you are less invisible through a screen. Uh, if you are sitting at the other end of a conference room uh, and you glance down at your phone, it won't be noticed. But when you are like this, um, in a remote mediation and your phone comes into, into sight, it gets, very, it gets very noticed. And what I have noticed is disinterest um, on the part of, of participants is something that comes over. Um, so anyone taking part, especially mediation advocates, uh, have got to, it, it's almost like it's harder. Um, it, it, it's harder because you have to maintain the, the, the concentration. Yeah. Uh, and keeping an eye, I'm looking at this green dot. Uh, and that's, you know, that can be quite strenuous doing that for um, uh, a, a large amount of, of time. Success rate, I, I've already um, uh, talked about. Uh, and a change to the mediation format, I, I think, is um, uh, it, it is really the key to this. Is what what a lot of mediators have done. I know I've done it. I know quite a lot have done it. it. In in terms of how and when you have first contact um, with the the parties, and I'll I'll, I'll deal with that. Um, conscious that I want to give you some uh, some time to questions. So. The, the attitude towards remote mediation, I, I think initial hesitation um, and skepticism to mediate remotely um, has to a large extent um, gone, but it's not been totally overcome. I, I think where we are on security issues is now much better. Um, I never bought into the fact that the, the, the lack of confidentiality on Zoom um, because all the other platforms, including Teams, have certain uh, issues to them in terms of security uh, and confidentiality. I favor Zoom over anything because of the simplicity of the, the breakout rooms, because you can see everyone in gallery view, uh, you know, subject to numbers. Um, uh, and I have not personally had any problems, and I don't know of anyone who has had a problem if it's been set up correctly with confidentiality um, uh, issues. Um, the concerns as how the process would work, that that was both lawyers and lay people, um, that's gone now. People are very familiar with, with using Zoom. You know, my, my 80 year old mother uses Zoom um, you know, all the time. And, and believe me, she is not computer literate. If she can do it, that, than anyone. So those have, have, have gone. And concerns over what an individual would have to do facing a camera uh, sort of has gone. Um, uh, and actually, I think there's been a, 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 a relax too. So 12 months down, um, we know it provides a good working alternative uh, and we know it's tried and tested. And I think the key to going back to the first slide is the efficient use of, of time. And if I had to pinpoint and, and you had to, to, to know all this and, uh, and I'll um, it, for me, the disadvantage, and it's quite personal, it, it's the lack of social in, in, interaction. It's the need for greater concentration. You, you have to, as a mediator, allow for breaks all the time because it is far more tiring sitting in, in front of the screen um, the, the whole day. Uh, and um, face-to-face -face mediations, I, 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 I had many, as many mediators did, that went on into the early hours. Um, and that's something I, I just you know, said that's not going to happen. Um, but but the remote mediation allows you um, uh, allows you to break and, and come back uh, another day, and that's one of the, the huge um, benefits. Um, I, I touched on the behaviour of attendees at the remote mediation. Yeah, 
Uh, and I think this is the, the one of the keys, what, which why it's working well. It's less stressful. People can be in their own home. They're in their own uh, own offices. Um, um, I think it's gone both ways in terms of emotions. Because we talk a lot in mediation about allowing emotions to, to come out appropriately. And I think there has been um, sort of down the middle an ability of people to show their emotions through the screen and equally an, an inability. And perhaps that, that's no different from, from um, face to, to, to face. Um, I've already talked about sometimes there's actions of attendees that would not happen face to face. It, it is that disinterest, that moving to use the phone, that clearly doing um, doing emails while you're uh, you're on there um, is everything. But there is a a um, a, a mixture of, of people feeling protected by not being in the room and being by the screen. And equally, I, I've had people who really did not want to put their camera on at any stage. Um, they, they just, they, they, they would feel far more vulnerable if, uh, um, if the, the camera was on. So I, I, I've had, um, uh, I, I've had that. So um, I said I'd come back to success and, uh, and failure rates, because I think this is, this is quite um, interesting. Uh, and I think my, my initial feeling was that they um, success rates were probably going up. And I think I think they were. And I think that was probably due to the fact that it was a new process more than anything else. Uh, and people were very keen on it. I, I now I'd say in the last um, three, four, five months, it, it, it's all the feeling as business very much um, as it used to be. But why I think it, it, it's, it's always difficult to measure what exactly is, obviously a settlement is a great success at a mediation, um, is because of how, and, and this is the key to it, what's actually happening in there. So the use of whether it's Zoom or it's Teams or, or any of the, the facilities, um, for me, the, the real game has been the the use i was gonna say i say they're expanded or expansion but really it's uh, for me i know for most mediators it's the introduction of preliminary zoom um video conference calls and um i uh never had a mediation um unless it was completely unavoidable but i never had a, a mediation where I did not at least have a telephone call with uh, uh, the representative of, of both sides or however many parties were involved. Um, it was rare in those telephone calls that the clients were involved. And so when Zoom came along, um, we had to have preliminary, um, or we felt we had to have preliminary video, video conference calls um, involving not just lawyers, but involving the clients. And the reason for that was to explain how the process was going to work. How are we going to mediate via this new uh, newfangled um, um, system? But what I and, and many mediators saw straight away was, um, although you would deal with that and you'd set up the, the, the breakout rooms and you'd move people to the, the different um, breakout rooms, et cetera, uh, and although uh, uh, although you do that, you then would have time to have a conversation. Well, firstly, I always use the time to do my mediation talk, explain to them about confidentiality without prejudice, what I what my role is, etc. But you would still have time, and or you might have time, but I, I generally do have time um, to actually talk about the dispute. And so what I found very quickly was that you actually were starting the mediation process before the mediation day. Uh, and that has been the, the monu monumental change for me in this. And it's that bit that I see as being really important to keep hold of um, if and when we go back to face to face. It's having, uh, and my preliminary um, uh, video conference calls uh, are, I'd say on average about one and a half hours, sometimes a bit shorter, sometimes a, a bit longer. But you've cleared the way to have a running start uh, and you, you've, you're not having that 
um, what you have often in a face-to-face -face mediation, your first meeting and you're getting to know the people um, uh, and yeah, losing time on, on the day. And so you, the initial mediation learning about confidentiality, et cetera, is, is, is all dealt with prior to that. Uh, and as I say, you hit the ground, um, you hit the ground running. So what, what this has meant for me is a change to the mediation format. Uh, and this is the positive thing that I, that I was saying. I, I hope that it is now the end to the one size fits all mediation, um, which is something that what didn't exist, I'd say 20 years ago, but it certainly existed for the last at least 10, if not 15 years. Yeah. Um, and by that, I mean that one size, it's one day, it's X hours prep um, and you get it done or you don't get it done. Um, and um, why is it different? Because once the mediator is appointed, you have this ability to engage the parties at an, at an earlier stage. Um, I've had one mediation where I had three preliminary uh, conference calls, each of about an hour with each party. Um, and, and we were mediating. <laughs> that, that's the, 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 uh, the, the key to it. There was actually one where um, someone actually didn't want the actual mediation day to happen because of certain things. Um, and our discussions took place two days before, one day before, and these discussions uh, as to whether or not the mediation day would or wouldn't happen slipped into the actual mediation day. And one party said to me that they were really, really angry that the other side who wanted to go to mediation weren't willing to have the mediation day. And I said, but we are mediating now. Um, and that's, that's the thing, it, 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 you've got the flow through the whole system. You haven't got this um, one size fits all. Um, it, as I've said, it's a preliminary video conference that allows this to, to begin um, prior uh, to the day. And what does it amount to? It, it prevents delay. It encourages discussions on the, the disputes, gets the parties into mediation, negotiation, settlement mode faster. The mediation, I'm going to uh, I'm starting the mediation day at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock my time um, uh, today. We've already had an hour and a half. I've already had an hour and a half with each of the parties. Um, and we sort of know where we're going to take off from because there were key things we talked about in both rooms um, and we will be be starting um, uh, uh, with those. So I, 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 I for me, um, it's been a really, really positive journey. Yeah? Um, there have been times of uh, frustration um, with uh, with technology, certainly times of frustration um, where um, Wi-Fi has failed either me or, or, or participants. Um, there has been my opportunities. I've had two mediations in person to see elements that that were were different um, compared to the face to face. And just to give you, I think it's a, it's a good example of that. I had had two, just about two hours with each party before we had this face-to-face -face, face -face one. And this was back, I think, in, in September. And um, when I, when, so we were ahead of the game and I didn't have to have introductions when I went into the rooms. And when I was in my first session, I suddenly realized something that I, is a struggle to see through the screen. And that was, um, when the key person in that party's room was speaking, where, if I was concentrating on them, I could not see how others in their party were reacting. But when I was in the room, I immediately saw how the, the other company director was reacting to what they were saying. And it gave me a much bigger insight as to whether what they were saying was credible or not. And that's easy to miss because you, you can't, it's very off-putting if you keep looking around the screen. So I tend, as most of us do now, to, to look at the dot and you can, um, you can miss things. But um, the combination of the two for me is, is, is going, is going to, to be there. Um, for me, patience has been the absolute key to this uh, as a, a online remote mediation format. It's being patient with the parties and giving the parties the, the time they need to, to come to a, a position.
but nothing's changed in terms of my style of mediation. I think, it, it, and I, I mediate on a very active style. Um, I, I will push and I will pull parties to the trough. Ultimately, I can't make them drink, but that hasn't happened. But you have to structure it because you have to give, give more time um, to it. So I'm going to pause. Um, it, it's been a great story. Anyone who follows me on LinkedIn um, will see. It's already I I have seen when I looked at the when I was being introduced the photo of me on the uh, on that crib. Um, but my my favourite mediation story is the one I actually uh, put on LinkedIn and I I like to share, um, which was I, I put up a photo of how I actually looked with a little bit of exaggeration by the end of the. The first lockdown where I hadn't managed to make it to a barber uh, and how I looked having managed to make it to a barber uh, and I think what I, I put there was my apologies to uh, the many people who had to put up with my wild hair um, as part of my own mediation story. So thank you very much for listening. I um, still have about 10 minutes uh, and I'm happy to take uh, any questions uh, uh, whatsoever. Dear all, if you have any questions, kindly raise your hand or write in the chat box uh, and sir will answer the questions on techniques and tools in online mediation or anything which you have uh, uh, seen pertinent to the topic or to the workshop, you can ask the questions. Participants and all the audiences are, the floor is open for the questions. You can write in the chat box, you can ask directly, I can unmute you. Come on, don't be shy. There's 117 of you. Someone must be brave enough. Mm. Otherwise, I'd have to start naming those who've got their cameras on. And you can only ask a question if you put your camera on. Mm. Participants, kindly ask the questions. You had very, very good uh, question session uh, before this session. So you can engage in the same fashion as you did in last session. We had a long 45, uh, 40 minutes uh, question answer, question hour session. You can again engage in the same fashion. Uh, can I, I'm looking at the chat and someone yes, has sir. put, yes, someone, yes. Uh, Tayab has put, since most of us are just starting out, how do we score our first professional mediation? Um, that, that's a really, um, I could ask that, uh, how do I score my next professional mediation? It, it, I still ask the question um, even, when I'm, even when I'm busy. Um, I, I think that the reality is, um, it, it, uh, for me, there are, there are two things. There is one which is doing a mediation accreditation. Yeah? Uh, and that is a great thing to do at any age. Yeah? Um, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't, you have a qualification but it doesn't make you a, a mediator. It gives you some tools. And if anything, it's rather like so in the driving test. You, you learn how to drive, but you don't become a decent driver uh, and, until you've been doing it quite a while. Um, and it's probably not, the analogy doesn't carry on, but how do you score your, your, your first um, mediation? I think you have to, there are many mediators out there who, or sorry, there are many people who have the accreditation, uh, I'd say, who often come to me and say, um, uh, I'm still struggling to get appointed as a mediator. And I say, what's your experience of mediation apart from doing the five day course? And they will say to me, zero. Uh, and I would say, well, um, on what basis do you think anyone is going to be engaging you to mediate their dispute? I said, you have to get yourself in. You have to get to know mediators. You have to get to know the mediation fraternity. Uh, you have to be taken on as an observer. Um, if you are in a law firm, um, you know, it, it, it depends where you are in the world as to how keen lawyers are on mediation, but get involved in disputes that are being mediated and seen it. And then moving forward, um, uh, what I always say is I, I think a mediator, a mediator doesn't need to be a lawyer, um, although certainly in the UK, it, it seems a huge majority are, um, but you need to have something that you bring to the table. 
and that that's the key to it and normally that's experience in something so one of one of mediator friends i know who's a fantastic mediator um was a doctor and, and does principally uh, clinical negligence um uh, and other types of medically related um you know, no legal knowledge at all but brings into those mediation brings to the table a huge amount of knowledge uh, about the the dispute it, itself um so it, it's it's knowledge but how do you how do you actually get success as a mediator it's getting your name around um and that takes time uh uh, and those of us who are mediating, we're still we're still doing it. it, it it's a it's constant. It doesn't it, it doesn't end. So there's a question by uh, uh, by Jay Sudhagar, sir. How can we assure confidentiality in online mediation? Um. Well, you may if you're on LinkedIn. Um, there's a, an American, he's a friend of mine, Jeff Kachapin, who's giving a talk all around the States on, on how online uh, mediation is not confidential. Uh, and the reason he is saying that is a little bit different. It may be the same in India, but it'd be different in the UK or certainly in England and Wales. Um, it is because the different states have different rules on confidentiality. Um, uh, and so one state's rule is not relevant to, a, to another. But I think the key, um, really where the question is going, um, it, it is in terms of, you don't know what, it's, it's very easy to go into a room and see what people are doing. And uh, I often face to face, if there was a, a very young junior lawyer just, Tap, tapping away every single word, I'd ask them to stop. And I'd say this, um, mediations don't get transcribed. Um, so, you know, put the lid down and you'll actually learn a lot more if you just sit, um, sit listening. Um, of course, you cannot stop people, even in face-to-face, -face, if they have a, a recording device, et, et cetera. Um, if, they're, if they have a mechanism for recording their, their screen independent of, of the, the Zoom recording, it's difficult to please. And I guess what it comes down to in the end, and, and certainly the mediations I do, it is it's trust. And there is a confidentially confidential, yeah, the it, confidentiality hasn't changed without prejudice nature has not changed. Um, whatever they do, they still cannot stand up uh, in court and say, well, at the mediation, uh, you offered me this much money. So it, it, it comes down to that. The other, you know, the other thing, of course, is you don't know who's the other side of the computer. Um, but it is mediation. It, 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 it's not a, a, a court. So I, um, you know, I have tended not to, to uh, get too hung up about it um, and um, not, you know, not worry too much because the sort of mediations I do, the people want to be there. Um, and the starting point is that they're not coming to learn something to, to um, be able to breach confidentiality. And when you get to a settlement, um, uh, you'll take care of any confidentiality provisions in that settlement. So the, my short answer is um, there, may be, <laughs> there may be occasions when you do need to worry about it considerably, but um, uh, I haven't found them. I haven't found any yet. So there is a question uh, by uh, Rupali. What are your tips on being attentive during mediation? Coffee. <laughs> um, it, it, it's um, I. Uh, I am far more tired uh, at the end of a mediation day. I think than I ever was in a face-to-face -face one. Uh, I, I am um, uh, wiped out. Uh, and I, I have done in the last year only, yeah, it was two back-to-back. -back. Um, one, it was actual mediations. The other one was remote calls, the next, um, provisional calls the next day. Um, and that was it. I, I will not do it again. Um, uh, because the second day I, I was not, that I was not firing on all cylinders. Um, it, it, it is, you know, I, I hate, it. on my particular computer, I've got a green dot. 
uh, a green light rather. You know, I, I hate to think you're probably going to find out in 10 years that that green light has burnt a hole in the back of my, you know, my brain or something. But it is, you are concentrating on the, uh, on this, this, this point. Um, so <coughs> what I have, I, I would, um, and I remember actually when I did the Cedar course many years ago, they, they said, you know, when you finish in one room, don't go into another room. Um, have a walk around, collect your thoughts, wait five, 10 minutes, and then go into the next room you know, when, when you're ready. And I know at the beginning, I wasn't doing that. I'd finish and think, right, okay, I'm now gonna I'll come out of that break room, breakout room, I'll go into the next breakout room. But I'm now very conscious, I finish, I actually send an email to the other party, say I'll be with you in 10 minutes, and I walk away from the desk. Um, and the same, you know, my, my mantra to people in face-to-face, -face, especially when we were in a, a, a air-conditioned solicitor's office or hotel or wherever, was you need to leave the building at some stage, have a walk around the block and come back. And it's no different. You need to get away from the, from the desk and, uh, and get fresh air. But it, it is more, you know, it, it, it's more difficult. Um, may also be my age as well. So I'm, you know, apparently I'm not getting any younger, I keep being told. Um, by the younger people in my life. There is a question, sir, about uh, uh, body language during mediation, uh, online mediation. Um, that's the bit, I mean, I, I, I think I mentioned it a bit uh, that I found really interesting that you, you, you can read a lot more than I ever thought you'd be able to. But when I, when I saw my my two face-to-face -face mediations in the last year, I saw I'd also been missing things. And one of them, as I said, was missing what other people in the room were doing. Um, but some, it, it also, it depends on the, it depends on so many things of quality. I've had mediation, I can hardly see the people because the camera is such bad quality or the, the connection uh, or um, uh, there are occasions uh, when people are sitting in, in um, they, gone into the solicitor's office you know it, it there are exceptions to lockdown and they're sitting in a huge conference room and they're the other end of the conference room and you're struggling to see um you know if it's a person or it's the water cooler yeah it, it and so you can't you know there, there are you know, issues can't you know um uh read emotions at, at all so it's a real mixed bag but what screams out to me the one more, I'd say more in, in um, more than face to face was this disinterest. That seems to come through the screen much more than if they're the other side of a, of a conference room. You know when they're bored, you know when you, you, um, uh, you've lost them. Um, uh, and the other thing I'd say is in the one face to face, I, I, um, uh, I had not, noticed just how in the preliminary conversation how difficult and how obnoxious a character one of the parties was until I met them face to face they had disguised that very well behind the lens of a, a of a camera and, and face to face that mask dropped very very quickly um, uh, whether it would have dropped after you know six eight hours maybe it would have been the same but that's what I noticed so there is a question, uh, sir, your tips on identifying Batna to a mediation problem. Uh, well, I, I, as a mediator, never go in and say, um, yeah, let, let's talk about your, your Batna. Um, I, um, not least because I, I don't think I'm bright enough to do it, but I, I most of my mediations, are um, there are lawyers involved and and dare I say at times are lawyer driven. That's the conversations for, for me, for the client to have with their lawyer, not with me. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm always talking all the time, your best worst case scenario. Um, I, I'm always talking in terms of uh, what you tell me in, in this room is 100% true and 100% correct. Um, but I want to go for a while into Alice in Wonderland world and pretend, what if it's not correct? And that's how I, I deal with it. I, I don't see my role um, as, as 
going to that scientific level if they want to do that because i don't think that helps my style of mediation is actually getting people to move away from these hardened um these hardened hardened points um so it, it's great to understand that the principles behind it but there are so many i mean there are you know, I, i've read so many books on on, on um different styles of, of negotiation techniques and for me a good mediator takes away um bits of each rather than be wedded to wedded to one so i i i i, I you know uh, you won't find me standing up and saying okay come I, I want us all to sit down and work out our, our background and, and and then we can go to the next stage do you suggest the sir do you suggest the same technique for uh Uh, effectively facilitating conversation between the parties also uh, okay M my M my my technique and I, i i'm not alone it is is telling the parties that at the start of the mediation wherever they are um there is no settlement because they won't need me they wouldn't have needed me and it's the same in both rooms wherever the mediation starts that is not where a settlement will occur um if it was you'd have a, you wouldn't have a mediation and that's the shock to the system because many times they they've spent this is why batner is is a difficult one they spent many time working out and um you know hopefully there's, there's no one for the mediation listening you know it, it applies to every mediation including the one I'm 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 about to do they've worked out their best case and their worst case um and and neither are, are going to be the settlement the settlement is going to to require on both parties in any mediation a um <coughs> a movement from where where they are and where they think they should be um and that movement only comes about from a change of perception a party has to has to change a a their perception perception how that happens in any mediation is is very it is you know um very different and i'm going to give you one example which is not about yeah it, it it's not about money in a sense but i did a a mediation on uh, a failure of a um huge an engineering and and heating installation that ended up causing the best part of 10 million pounds worth of damage now um and one side's evidence both sides evidence was was good i mean that's that's the skill of of lawyers is you can make a case appeal to a judge on on either side um uh, and um there was a, a an issue in the end over what one for all this huge case for all the however many hundreds of thousands of documents it could come down to um what one individual person did or did not do and that that's not unusual um in, in cases and so a discussion took place um uh, eyes mediator said um i want you just to give consideration as to what happens if mr smith evans is is, is not accepted now uh and everyone in the room said it will be it will be accepted yeah. there's no doubt about that and you go on what happens if it's not no no it will be it will be and then i i would say let's go into the realms of of fantasy let's say on a fantasy level we get a really bad judge and the judge doesn't accept mr smith's evidence and then once it's looking well that's ridiculous actually until one person in the room says well in that case we'll lose the case and that's your your batner your wagner your everything has gone out the window because someone has just changed their perception and for me that's what mediation is about it's just making people see it from a different viewpoint and you know that it was i mean i've simplified it but there was um it, there were huge legal arguments so over duty and and different things but someone finally seeing that something could change at court that for all the advice for all the four experts on each side's advice could make a, a huge difference um that's what led to the that's what led to the settlement in that case um so for me it, it's it, it it's a um 
you take people on in as a mediator your skill is is taking them on a journey which is a very different journey to what the the lawyers have taken them on you've got to make them see something different from just plain and it's not just lawyers i'm not just taking lawyers. what lawyers and experts have made them see sometimes for the previous you know, one, two, three, four, five years. Um, and that's what you've got to do. It's not always possible, but when you can do it and when perceptions change on both sides, um, settlement falls into place. Sir, uh, there is a question, if your time allows, sir, if you allow. I have one minute and then I, I've got to go because I've got to set up the Zoom, the, the Zoom call for the other side. Sure, sir, sure. Uh, there is a question, uh, how much law can be used in mediation process? Um, hopefully none. <laughs> uh, uh, um, my, my mentor when I was a very junior barrister, um, uh, and he was already a QC then, he's still alive, he, he's, he's, um, he still practices occasionally, but he's, he's quite old. But he used to say um, two things to me was one, um, he used to say, um, you know, uh, since leaving university, I've never found the law to be of any great use in my practice. Uh, um, and that to me, um, to me uh, sums it up because cases are very rarely about law. Cases are fact driven. Um, uh, uh, and I can give you a quick example. I, I had one, yeah, lawyers want you to believe it's about law. I had one lawyer who wanted to explain the law to me. It was a case, it was an area of law that wasn't one I practice in. And I said, okay, it was in a private session and uh, he or she went on for about 20 minutes about this legal point. And at the end of it, I said, well, you know it far better than me. Um, I accept, yeah, I absolutely accept. Uh, and what you're saying is that your clients have absolutely no chance of, of losing this case because of the law. And she, he or she said, yeah, absolutely, that's it. And I said, okay, um, Mr. Miss has been speaking now for um, the last 20 minutes. Uh, I was concentrating on them, um, but can you tell me in the last 20 minutes, has the other side come in and offered you any higher figure? And the clients got it. The client went, said, okay, the law's irrelevant, isn't it? And I said, yes, it's how much they're willing to pay you. But on that note, I'm afraid I am going to have to. Thank you so much, sir. Thank goodbye. you so much for all your time to us. It, it's been a pleasure. Um, please, nice. anyone, um, uh, please look me up on LinkedIn. Uh, please do follow me. I put stuff about mediation quite regularly. Thank you so much, sir. And I Thank will you. see you as um, uh, in the competition. Sure, sir. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, everyone, so much. Have a have a great day, or what's left of your day. Thank, uh, you. thank you, Andrew. Thank you so much for thank giving you. your time. And we are really privileged to hear you out today and uh, see you in the competition. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm privileged and honored to, to be here. Bye. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, sir. Sir, do we uh, take the same ahead with the team? Yes, yes, yes. They are ready. Sir, you will really be us how to do that. Uh, you see, uh, now this session, which the last which we are going to organize is uh, a mock mediation. Um, I think that you have all have been uh, shared with the uh, the the problem yes, sir. Uh, of this. Yeah. So what uh, we have done is to give actually you the understanding of what an international mediation is all about. So we have a team uh, from uh, Germany. There is a mediator from Ireland and another team from India. And they would be uh, doing this, uh, this mock mediation and through which you would be able to you know, understand different processes as it happens in a mediation and especially in an international mediation. So I think without... Uh, delay, we are already um, we are getting late. Uh, let's uh, we'll start the with this session and uh, we'll let the teams be there uh, for the mock.
वो बताएंगे सर कितने करने सो द मॉडरेटर ऑफ द ऑब्जर्व हु हु इज देयर कैन आई थिंक दे आर ऑलरेडी देयर दे ऑलरेडी जॉइन द सेशन तो लेट देम बी हियर दे हैव जॉइन द सेशन आई हैव अनम्यूटेड देम हेलो एंड वेलकम मिस्टर नियाली and uh, mr tim are there any more persons to join yeah yeah yes so uh mahak if you if you are oh i think you have to unmute uh, mahak uh, sir mahak mahak shruti gupta then mahak rathi then alexandra kaifer uh, niyaz and tim they are the people who would be doing this uh, mock gupta sir Shruti Gupta. Yes, I am unmuted. And Tim. Ready and I'm unmuted already. Hello, everyone. Perfect. Hi, Alex. Alexandra. Oh, you need to unmute Alexandra, sir. Alexandra. Yeah. Yes, I'm done. Thank you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> how are Hi. you? May I'm just good. Ask? May I just ask before we start? Um, my understanding of it is that we will be doing the mock mediation for sixty minutes. Is that correct, or is that time shortened? Uh, that's okay. It's at right. Thank you. Okay. Do you want us to start? Yes, we should start now. Okay. So, uh, welcome to this mediation. Uh, normally, I'd be meeting you face to face and saying to you. Uh, welcome to the ICC uh, Dispute Resolution Center, but unfortunately, in the COVID-19 era, such a greeting is not possible. Um, I feel that it's a, a demonstration of your commitment and trust uh, to mediate in the virtual environment. Sometimes technology works perfectly; sometimes it's a little bit clumsy. So if things go wrong today. Uh, we just have to forgive each other. Uh, before I move forward, I would like for um, the for participants and uh, in the mediation and myself just to spend one minute sitting quietly together one minute sitting quietly together So thank you for choosing me uh, to work with you as mediator today. Um, as you know, my name is Niall Lawless. You can call me Niall, Mr. Lawless, or you can call me mediator. And um, as a small mediation formality, I would like uh, the participants to introduce themselves, your role in the mediation today, and also how you would like to be addressed. Thank you, Neil. I am Blake Fisher. I am the managing director of Green Exports, and you can call me Blake, please. So my name is Tim Trollson. I am the counsel for Green Exports, and will be advising Blake in this session today. Um, feel free to call me Tim or Mr. Tim or Mr. Trollson, however you feel comfortable. Hello, everyone. I am Ali Ali, managing director for Equa Imports. You can call me Ali or Miss Ali as you feel comfortable. So that is it. Hello, everyone. I am Mehak Rati. I am counsel for Equa Exports, representing Ali Ali here. You can call me Mehak. So thank you. Uh, so mediation successful, and one of the reasons for that is that there is a a tried and tested process. So one of the things I would like to ask is, will you allow me to be the guardian of that process for you today? Yes. 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 
So thank you for the briefing paper you sent me. Uh, it was very, very helpful. Uh, what I say to parties in mediation, often there's emotional content and there's no need to shy away from emotional content. But what I would ask is that uh, you communicate with each other in a way that the other side would consider to be respectful. And we've agreed that we'll use the ICC mediation rules 2014. And I'd like just to touch on Article 9, which deals with confidentiality. Mediation is a confidential safe space uh, for you to understand each other's interests and to explore contractual and non-contractual solutions. We've agreed that the mediation is confidential. One aspect of that is if today you disclose information that would not otherwise be discoverable, it cannot later be used against you in any subsequent arbitration or litigation. Mediation is a safe space for you to explore what if, because nothing is agreed until everything's agreed. Um, your lawyers will have told you that uh, you know, mediation generally can be considered as having five stages. It is introduction. It is information exchange. It is option generation. It is negotiation and then conclusion. So five stages, introduction, information exchange, option generation, negotiation and conclusion. Let me say a few words about the framework we've agreed for our meeting today. Uh, because of time constraints, we're spending 60 minutes together in this first mediation session. If either of you want to have private time with me uh, at caucus, we can do that. Uh, we will limit the caucus time to five minutes. Caucus is important because it enjoys a higher level of confidentiality. And what I mean by that is if I spend time uh, with one of the parties, I will not disclose to the other party what's been discussed in that meeting unless I have your specific authority to do that. Sometimes it's helpful to have a private meeting between the two business principals, and sometimes the process can be moved forward by a meeting between the two lawyers and the mediator. Uh, sometimes the parties want to have a, a short meeting to collect their thoughts, and uh, if that's the case, you just say, Mr. Mediator and I, we'd like to have a short break, and then uh, you leave the mediation space and come back together. Um, do you have any questions for me? No. 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 I have, I have I have two questions for you. Uh, Mr. Fisher, Ms. Fisher, have you come here today with the authority to compromise this dispute? Yes. Okay. And Ms. Riley, have you come here today with the authority to compromise this dispute? Yes. Ms. Riley, have you come here today with the intention of settling this dispute? Yes. And Ms. Fisher, have you come here today with the intention of settling this dispute? I have. So uh, what I say to parties is uh, do not expect to find a place of happiness here today. If we were a car during this mediation session and maybe a subsequent mediation session, and if we can get to an agreement that meets your own standards of fairness so that tomorrow morning you look yourself in the mirror and you say, well, maybe I could have got more, whatever, but you can actually feel I put that dispute behind me and I can move forward now with my, with my life. So um, each party they will have an opportunity to make some opening remarks, which is uninterrupted time to set out their position and what they want to achieve. So I'd like to ask the requesting party to start with its opening statement. Thank you, Neil. And thank you for agreeing to meeting here for that mediation today. I am really looking forward to this process. I stand for, the brand Greenfoot stands for, for the social value of a truly and sustainable organic food business. I'm convinced of the quality of the products. I'm convinced by the vision that the brand stands for. And I'm convinced to support sustainability. Isn't that, Ali, what we signed up for the first place when we decided to support the brand? Yes. I am so sad about the previous developments. For me, this is not a day-to-day -day business. This is more than that. This is about my community, the farmers that deliver the products. This is about my responsibility for my community and the farmers. And I want to serve them. Let me be really honest. I am not a supporter of Northland's Casa exit, not at all. If I could change it, I would. 
I stand for everything that the Casa aims to achieve. Union, community, cross-border relationships and cooperation. Exactly what we lived up to in the last six years. And Neil, I'm here today because I believe that Ali and I couldn't change what happened. These were outside forces forcing us to change our relationship, our business relationship. And this is why, Ali, I really do hope that mediation is the right process for us. I do believe that this is shared responsibility. And as I understand, mediation is about finding a solution together. It is about finding a win-win solution rather than pointing a loser or a winner in front of court. So I am sure that we can make this happen, looking at our really cooperative and positive relationship since 2015. It worked so well. I am not pretending that this is going to be easy. There are outstanding invoices of 100,000 Northland shillings. There are losses we face of 30,000 Northland shillings, and we have to face that and address that today. Still, I do not want this green dotted line known for open borders, no tariffs, no customs, no border checks to become a continuous line. And let us do anything that is in our power to make or to stop this from happening. I want to be very transparent here. I am keen on keeping this business relationship going. I am keen on protecting my community and making this possible to live up what I signed up for in the first place. Thank you, Ali, for listening. This is why I'm here today. And I'm looking forward to listen to your perspective as well. And Neil, I really do hope that with your expertise, we can find an agreement together. I would ask my lawyer, Tim, to present our legal point of view. Not that I want to focus on this today, but I do, do think that you will better understand my perspective if you listen to our legal points as well. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for sharing that, Blake, and thank you for putting all of your efforts and all your heart into this alternative process to try to solve this dispute. However, it's my position to stress that there indeed is a legal background to all of this. And especially regarding the past troubles and actually of to what brought Blake and her company to this table, there are two things that I have to stress here, which first are the losses um, that have been incurred and the damages that Blake's company Green Exports is owed. And second, the border delays and the newly imposed tariffs are of quite a legal relevance and have brought Blake and Green Exports to this table today. Now, regarding the losses and, more, and also the damages, Ellie's company is currently indebted if, uh, in the height of 100,000 Northland shillings to Blake's company because Blake performed her contractual obligations by dispatching the organic food products on time and just as usual as normally would have happened. And that has been happening for the past couple of years and there was no wrongdoing whatsoever from Green Export's side. And that is why from a legal perspective, Green Exports holds that it is indeed entitled to receive the outstanding invoices of 100,000 Northland shillings. And to touch upon my second point, which were the delays at the border with that shipment, as well as the newly imposed tariffs. As with any export import relationship, there always is a risk on the side of the importer that goods may not pass the border, may not be allowed to sell the goods in the country that they have imported them to. And that is why any losses or damages that may have existed or have incurred at uh, eco imports are far away from Blake's or Green Exports sphere of risk or responsibility. And that is why it's Green Exports positions that it is not necessary to 
reimburse eco imports for any damages that may have occurred in the past. And now that concludes green exports position and uh, the legal view on the past. However, also if you, Ali and Blake should decide to move forward together with your businesses, there is one important aspect from a legal side that must be considered, which are the certified organic standards under the newly agreed preferred straight state, state trading agreements, sorry for that. And though it was concluded between Northland and Southland, and it is my personal legal opinion that agreeing on only certified organic products could reduce the risk of potential future border delays significantly. Now, that is all I propose to say at this stage. I am here today in the role of an advisor to Blake, and I will do so to the best of my abilities. And I support her position in trying mediation to solve this dispute fully. Now, I am also here to ensure that green exports' interests are represented firmly. And now I look forward to hearing your view, Ali, and also your legal considerations, Mark. Thank you. So, uh, uh, Ms. Fisher and Tim, thank you very, very much. Uh, Ms. Riley and uh, uh, Mahak, um, really it's now your opportunity to set out your position and what you want to achieve today. Thank you, Ms. Nell. So, first of all, I would like to thank Mr. Blake to come to this table and to uh, resolve this dispute mutually. <laughs> And I'm, I know we have this past relationship with each other, and I would like to uh, preserve it and uh, have this uh, flourishing in the future. So uh, whatever happened in the business was unfortunate and was not uh, in hand of any of the party. So we, there was, this was uh, a very good idea, and we always have been very understanding towards each other. And we have a very cordial relationship with each other. And uh, so what I stand here for is I submit to this mediation and I want to resolve this dispute mutually with a common understanding. And also I will discuss all these disputes openly with a pure mind. And that is what I have to say. And for uh, regarding the issues, so uh, we would like to discuss few uh, issues apart from what Mr. Black, uh, Black has already stated. We would also like to discuss about uh, pr uh, pricing. We would like to discuss about the losses we have incurred and I leave the rest to the, my council to discuss further. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm glad that we are, we've agreed to resolve this dispute through mediation. And I would like to thank Neil for taking out time and oversee today's mediation. Uh, I'm very sure that we will be able to find a more uh, makeable means to resolve our differences. I would first like to start off by mentioning that I think it's very heartening to see that at the very outset, both Blake and Ali, we value their relationship. And I really hope that as such, we can use mediation to find a solution that would work for both the parties. As both of you have worked together, as well as uh, you had maintained good relations with you, whatever has happened was unfortunate, was unforeseen. I'm uh, Ellie's lawyer here, I'm uh, representing her. Uh, I have given her uh, my, uh, my opinions. I would not be uh, getting into the law point here because I wish that this uh, gets uh, sorted through mediation, but still I would uh, focus upon the issues that we have and upon the law point that I have told her. First of all, uh, we would like to talk about, uh, first of all, we would like to talk about the costs and the losses that we have suffered. Uh, there are a lot of losses that she's, uh, Ali has suffered, the company has suffered uh, because of Northland backing up from CASA. And uh, we, uh, we uh, are not at all liable for uh, those losses. Uh, what we say is uh, the claim is based upon uh, frustration of contract and at least the fresh produce that was ruined at the border in early January and it became unsellable. So we cannot be held liable for that. We are, uh, we, we, I think we are not uh, liable for any such thing. And secondly, I would, we are very much willing to get the agreement back on a secure footing and keep the Greenwood, uh, Greenfoot brand alive and well, as well as we uh, both of us can keep control over it. 
So regarding the agreement that we are talking here, since CASA is no more in operation in Northland, uh, I would suggest uh, that we could ha uh, discuss about uh, having an arbitration clause here and having a jurisdiction a clause here. We will be discussing that. Uh, any issues that come from Blake's side are more than welcome, uh, but these are the two issues uh, that we wish, wish to discuss, who will be bearing the losses here, and about, uh, about the agreement. We want to get it back on a secure footing. Thank you so much, Neil. Okay, so uh, how would you like to go forward? I would love to set up an agenda because um, Ali and Mahak, you mentioned a few points you would like to talk about and us as well. And maybe that will lead us better through the process in order to have a structure. What do you think? Oh uh, yes, that yeah. is perfect. Let us set few agendas and few issues in common that we would like to discuss and deal with each issue one by one. Okay, so we, we don't have a whiteboard. Uh, so I, I will talk through the things uh, that I believe that you have mentioned so far. And if we make a note of them, then we can confirm whether I've covered everything or whether there's things missing. So uh, these are not being mentioned in any particular order. And once you've made a list of them, it's entirely for you to decide where you want to go with your conversation. So uh, each of you have talked about outstanding invoices. So can you just make a note of that, please, if you have a pen and paper. Uh, we've talked about losses. Yeah. Um, you've talked about the Greenford brand. You've talked about ADR clauses. Uh, and you've talked about overall trying to put back into place a sustainable agreement. So if I missed anything from a, what's important for you to discuss today. A, Tim, Tim also mentioned tariffs. So tariffs a, should be on the list. So outstanding, outstanding invoices, losses, Greenford brand, tariffs, and then ADR provisions, future ADR provisions. Yes, just, that uh, totally works for me. Sorry, Tim, go ahead. No, just for, for the completeness, uh, I think it's, it's just Blake's company that is actually uh, has outstanding invoices that must be paid. For, I understand that for Ali, there's no outstanding invoices as she's only the purchaser, but maybe she has incurred some damages, but just want to keep that very straight here because there is outstanding invoices which are different than damages that need to maybe be paid or not. Uh, okay. What Ali has suffered here is she had to pay import tariffs because of uh, CASA being withdrawn by Northland. So we're talking about the tariffs here. So I, I so uh, you know uh, let me let me say this that you know jointly you have a problem which you have to resolve yes and you know there are different facets of the problem which are more important to uh, each party um, you know we're going to be discussing uh, invoices we're going to be discussing losses uh, I'm not sure that it's clear yet to me what the exact losses are that you've suffered. Uh, we're going to be discussing tariffs. We're going to be discussing ADR provisions. Um, you know, it would be quite normal uh, at this stage for each of you to want to understand each other's position better, um, you know, to ask some questions, to gather some information. So, you know, my guidance to you is in terms of process uh, to agree one of the items that you want to deal with and then to discuss it. So from my side, uh, Mahak, you touched upon the losses already. So um, for me, it would be good to start there to better understand the challenges you faced by the exit of the Casa exit of Northland. Um, would you okay to yes. start at that point? Let's start with losses. Yes, yes. Okay, I mean, I, I can just jump right in if, if that is um, also your advice, Neil. Um, I think it's best if we really just ask questions to each other. And I really need to understand what your situation looks like. Like what happened after Northland did back out of the cars? How, how do you deal with a situation? It is a very unimaginable situation. There are a lot of problems at the border. 
then we have to pay increased tariffs also so it has been a very difficult situation to continue business with northland uh, but after uh, the northland uh, allowed products from greenland uh, green food so that is how it was uh, a little bit on ease but the cost of the product also increased and it actually increased a uh, a big amount of cost huge amount of losses were incurred to me and then uh, i had to uh, see the goods which were destroyed on the border due to it was not been able to transfer to the places and to the farmers who were working with me it caused a lot of misery to them they were not able to get a uh, no uh, revenue generation was there for them and there was uh, customers also who expected you know we have been a uh, maintaining this quality standards which we were not able to give them we were not able to provide them due to the delays from the borders so there were everything was the sir then you know we have to start it all again and we have to reassure our customers that we will never be uh, providing them bad quality goods so it has been a difficult situation that is why i am here to tell you my part of story then we have this covid problem it was so unprecedented that no one was even prepared and no one even anticipated what is going to happen so we did not know what is going to happen how to manage it so that also created a lot of uh, problems uh, all the business processes were hampered then we did not have access to you also for some point of, uh, for like some point of time we were not in touch and that also created a problem there were a lot of uh, miscommunication in the process so uh, they uh, we have incurred a lot of import tariffs now and that is also creating a lot of problem with us that is all uh, we have suffered from here but now i think since we both are here we both be able to resolve from amicable uh, issue and we will able to resolve it amicably but may, may i ask may i ask mr riley are you able to enumerate your losses be specific about the amounts we have a uh, 40000 on uh, southland france which we incurred as import tariffs and 60000 uh, southland france which were incurred as a total loss due to the border transactions and everything uh, incurred uh, neil i would like to add few things here to what ali has said uh she has given you the amount that she has incurred till now uh but yes as blake has already asked uh, i completely understand your situation also that you have pending invoices that needs to be cleared from your end uh but uh, the situation here is also very chaotic and uh, we can expect uh, some kind of cooperation from your end uh she uh, the tar- the issue of tariffs is when we entered into the agreement initially the business was smooth there were no issues of tariff uh, se- supplying goods selling goods everything was so smooth but after this withdrawal from casa there are a lot of things that have come up that have popped up the issue of tariff is not fixed that okay this is the percentage of tariff that will be charged we are not very sure they might increase it in future it might go down uh, so that needs to be decided when we uh, talk about agreement uh, that uh, how how do we deal with the issue of tariff since we are looking to uh, settle it out and we are not uh, fighting it out here uh, you need to understand that we are incurring tariff on whatever is uh, being sent so we need to deal with that issue also so it's the tariff just, from if i just may quickly step in here mohan yeah, yeah. i i think i think blake is not comfortable yet to talk about an a, a agreement or 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 moving forward i think she just not does not have the sufficient information to really make a a based decision upon uh, upon what may be possible so i think we may be going a bit too fast here but blake yeah. uh, let me know if i may misinterpret something here Thanks. Yeah thank you thank you Tim cuz Mahak and um Ali thank you so much for sharing the whole picture it just i just want to break it down a bit for me to better understand the certain issues cuz this is obviously the first time we actually talk about the whole situation so i just want to make sure that i really understand um you you talked about your customers as well um how how did that take place like were there a lot of complaints you were dealing with or w- what was the situation there is there pressure from that side so what happened was uh, since uh, you withdrawn uh, the northland withdraw from the casa 
so what happened was a lot of uh, restriction on the border for the goods right so the goods which were of perishable nature were destroyed and the quality kept on degrading when they were on the border only because there was no reasonable take care taken care of that and if we were supplying those goods to our customers you know how quality how much quality we have maintained for our goods and you know supplying those goods to the customers actually got complaints that we have reduced in the quality or the quality was not up to the mark so that is how the customers got affected and that is why i put forward this point because we will have to reassure our customers if we renew this contract and we decide to move forward with our business we have to reassure our customers that green food is always going to have this good quality and we are not going to disappoint them in future whatever happened in past cannot be changed we cannot dwell on those issues but we can definitely make a better future and we can uh, resolve this dispute that is what my point was uh, okay neel i think tim has uh, rightly pointed out uh, before uh, the mediation started i was having a word with ali and uh, her stand is uh, that since it has been working out really well with both the parties since long uh, the relationship that you had and everything was working out well she is very much willing to continue it in future and uh, we it would be great if we can uh, go ahead with it that question should have been come up uh, initially but uh, yes uh if you are uh, okay with it if you want to uh, continue this in future we can go ahead with it otherwise we'll discuss the losses and everything that has that went wrong but uh, from our end we are very much willing to uh, continue working with you uh, ahead i'm i'm so willing to do that as well i just really need to talk about those losses cuz i'm unfortunately there are 100000 northern shillings of pending invoices and this is a lot of money and on top we had losses as you did as well and i understand that you have costs on your side as well right you you talked about the tariffs of 40000 you talked about um border issues um that lead to to costs of 60000 um so i i totally understand that there are a lot of numbers in the room and i'm um, Neil, I don't, I don't really know how to, how to go ahead because I'm not ready to, to talk about our future relationship because this is just an issue that's the elephant in the room and we just have to deal with it now before moving on and talking about our past great relationship that we would like to continue. So, how would, what do you, would you advise to do now? Okay, so from a mediator's perspective, um, I don't have any doubt that you want to continue your relationship. and um in your opening um a uh, miss fisher you used the words uh, exactly you used the words where we want to be transparent and we want to keep the relationship going and we want to protect our community that's what you said out as high level aspirations for this mediation and of course and i'm hearing from uh, miss riley that she also wants to keep the relationship going so i don't think that uh, you can get should get too bogged down in that okay uh, we have an issue uh, which sometimes arises in a mediation which is it's an impasse all right um and the impasse that seems to be arising is that um green exports wants to talk about unpaid invoices and you're insisting that that's addressed and eco imports a uh, would rather maybe talk about something else Is that a fair summary? I think yeah, I think that's I the situation, yeah. And can I just ask, can I just ask you a question? There are, there are two currencies involved here. Uh, there's the Northern shilling and the Southern shilling. And um during a Sorry to interrupt me, but it's Southern franc. Sorry, Southern franc. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So, I'm glad I'm asking my question. um is it possible that you can agree that uh, you will for the purposes of this this mediation use one currency and uh, the reason i ask is because i uh, on the one hand we've got 100,000 northern shilling uh, in outstanding invoices plus 30,000 in losses and on the other hand we've got a uh, 40,000 southland francs in increased tariffs and also 60,000 southland francs for deteriorated product So, uh, is it possible that we could get that into one currency so we could understand, um, you know, how the two sets of numbers compare? Really? So, 
the the 100,000 northern shillings in outstanding invoices would be represented by 66,000 southern francs and that is because the exchange rate has changed for one southern franc to to represent 1.5 northern shillings okay so um that that calculation is eco imports happy with that calculation as being correct yes okay all right so um Let's talk about the invoices. Why haven't the invoices been paid? Okay, so we did not. Yeah, you go ahead. So we did not uh, pay the invoices because we were incurring losses there, and we had the almost same outstanding amount, and we wanted to discuss this first, and then decide upon how we are going to pay or how we are going to settle this issue. We have no uh, problem in paying, but we would also uh, like. Uh, Mr. Black to uh, you know compensate us for the losses we have also incurred because both the parties have always uh, already suffered so much. We don't want uh, each of I don't want uh, Mr. Black to suffer because of me or I don't want to suffer here. So that is why I want to agree on a mutual price so that we both can uh, mutually agree on it. Do you want to add anything, Mahesh? Uh, yes, uh, she's re uh, rightly pointed out about invoices not being paid. Uh, what I would like to state here is earlier uh, things were very smooth when uh, the, when it came to export and import. Uh, but after this entire situation, after this ongoing situation, uh, the tariffs are set to continue to apply indefinitely. And second, the main thing, the border issues. We are not uh, account. I mean, we are not responsible for. Uh, the invoices not being paid because we we received the received the material really late. The border issues in January led to perishing of the goods, and these goods became undeliverable. We cannot uh, tarnish the reputation of green food uh, green food here by delivering something which is not uh, worth uh, worth. I mean, which is which is not perish uh, which has uh, gone bad. We cannot deliver them uh, low quality products, and uh, also. Uh, for our own clients, the local retailers, they be they got dissatisfied because of the shortfall in the stock, and thus they are not paying us for the, these goods. I, 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 Mahak, I can understand that that is very unfortunate for you, but from from what I have understood uh, in discussing this with Blake is that the goods were not stopped at the Northland border, but they were stopped at the Southland border, and it's just my evaluation that the importer is is liable for taking care that the goods pass into the country once they have exited the exporting country. That is why, but that's my position that Blake is not necessarily uh, obliged to, to reimburse you for any of those uh, unfortunately uh, perished goods. That's, uh, that, that's at least my evaluation. Uh, uh, yes, but uh, I think the entire situation arose because of uh, Northland backing out from uh, Casa. And that, that is one of the major factors. So earlier it was very smooth between both the parties. So this is our situation. These are the tariffs that we are uh, we have incurred. This, um, this might go increase in future depending upon uh, the percentage that they decide. So this is what we have incurred from our end. And you've discussed what losses, what invoices are pending from your end. And Neil has rightly converted it into one currency for uh, both of us to understand it better. Uh, but uh, there was a contract between us and that contract was frustrated because we, we, we never uh, received the goods. And uh, uh, it's, it's not Ali who's, uh, uh, who's responsible for the border delays or the delays being caused for this unforeseen situation, which what happened in January. I guess we can't really move on in that direction because... I mean, we did send the products. We what? received them from our farmers and we did send them and exported them. And then they got stuck, and unfortunately, um, which was, I understand, not your fault, but it wasn't our fault that Northland decided to exit the Casa as well. As I said in my opening statement, I'm not a supporter of that decision and I can only deal with what's left now. So this is um, really what I'm facing. And I, I get that you face losses and I really don't want to get stuck here because we have so much um, in common already. And I, I really want to talk about 
how we would deal with it in the future, what currency is um, a certain better one and what law is a better one. These are all future um, topics we, we, we need to discuss. But um, to kind of wrap up the past, I think it's important that we both take on, I mean, we, we can't really pay our losses and your losses. This is just not possible for us. And I, I heard already, Ali, you said that um, it is out of question that you would definitely um, cover the invoices that are outstanding. So if that's the case, this is like one of the most important packages I brought with me today um, that need to be resolved. And if you say, yeah, I, I see that and we were planning to, um, um, and if we can work this out, that you um, actually cover those invoices, I am totally happy to work around the losses and um, do it in a in a mutual way that we can both take care of our, each of our losses, which is just the case now, and um, move on and make sure that in the future we we calculate tariff tariff um, costs and we calculate anything that is connected to the border issues now. What do you think, Ali? Blake, as you said, I have no problem in playing the invoices. So uh, what I will request you is that, you know, provide me a considerable time since my business has already suffered so many losses. I would definitely need some considerable time or, you know, in some kind of installment. But I would definitely uh, want to continue this uh, relationship. And because of that, I want to pay this money. And also I would uh, request you if possible and uh, that was one of the main issue why I withheld your payment was I wanted you to uh, you to actually you know uh, be a part of my loss and help me to recover out of it because this was uh, not my decision this was not your decision and no one can be blamed for it but we both suffered and we both are suffering right now there's no situation uh, which is you know we predicted there were so many things which happened after the casa and that led to a situation getting worse and, and it did not improve so let's try and you know come to a mutual decision and i definitely i'm saying the phone nail that i'll uh, pay your amount whichever is outstanding and we have agreed that it is 66000 uh, uh, plan so uh, we can decide a proper method of paying and which I'll uh, definitely pay it in the near coming future. So thank you, Ali, thank you. For, for being so open to, uh, to this position. I just want to quickly clarify uh, what, what Blake has just, uh, just proposed to you as well so that we're all on the same page here. And that was that um, she's very glad to hear that you're open to paying the invoices. And apart from that, she proposed that, uh, if I understood it correctly, that each party just covers their own losses so that, for example, green exports would not be commencing proceedings or requesting you to cover its losses of 30,000 francs, uh, no, um, nothing shillings that it incurred. But that would also then mean that you, Ali, would not uh, request Blake and, and or green exports to cover the, the losses that you have incurred. Uh, Mr. Tolson, that, that's not exactly what I heard. Okay. Uh, so, uh, in respect of um, the costs that have been incurred, the losses that have been incurred, um, there are a number of options. Uh, one party accepts all of the losses. The other party accepts all of the losses. Each party accepts their own losses or something different. And, you know, uh, from the conversation that's taken place, I'm not sure where you are in that continuum. Okay, you know, I'm clear, I'm clear that each of you has said that you're not going to accept the other person's costs. Uh, so you've still got a lot of space in between the two positions. So I think it's worthwhile having a conversation about losses. Okay, as I understood, we, I mean, we've covered the invoices, which is really great. I'm really grateful for that. And coming to the losses, please, Ali, fill me in again, because obviously I, we, we didn't really get what we were saying, because um, I actually understood that we could um, agree on, on covering the loss, our losses, like I would cover my losses and you would cover yours. Um, if that's not what you were saying, then please um, explain to me what would you what would be the way to to go 
I'm not expecting you to reimburse me my losses at this very moment. But what I am saying is consider that amount. It's almost around the amount I have to pay. It's equal to the sixty-six thousand francs I have to pay you. What I am saying is at least compensate me for half of those losses which I have incurred because those losses were not my responsibility, but I did incur. And I did try to save our relationship by paying that. I tried to pay the delivery. I paid import tariffs. I paid whatever. It was not even part of the contract as per se. So I always have tried to, you know, put an extra effort and uh, save it. So I expect you to at least uh, reimburse me for half of my losses. That is where I stand right now. I I think I can uh, clarify it a little here. Uh, what uh, Ali is trying to say is, uh, she has suffered her losses on account. I mean, she has suffered for uh, she's paid forty thousand so, uh, Southland francs uh, because of the tariffs and everything. You've paid sixty six thousand uh, Southland francs approximately, right? Because of the invoices not being cleared. If I'm not wrong here, right, Blake? If I, uh, okay, that is the amount that we have suffered. So, sixty-six on your end and forty uh, thousand South Southland francs on our uh, end. She has to ultimately sixty, 60 minutes. Uh, sixty thousand francs. Sixty thousand. Okay. So, what I, I mean, uh, what Ali is trying to say is, apart from, I mean, she will be clearing those uh, forty thousand Southland francs also, and uh, she was expecting some kind of, you know, because uh, tariffs are not imposed by her or by Southland. It's not a unilateral decision that has taken place. Uh, tariffs will continue to operate in future also. So uh, I think Nil can help us better in understanding how do we want to go ahead with it. Uh, she uh, Ali has clearly mentioned that uh, out out of those uh, sixty thousand uh, Southland francs, uh, she out of whatever is uh, due towards invoices, she's very much willing to pay half of it. Okay. I think at that stage, um, I would like to have a break um, to discuss what what we just um, had on the table with my lawyer and private. Um, okay. Is that possible? Yes. So just for the technicalities, that would be three minutes that both parties, yeah. so me, El, Blake, Mahak, and Shruti are uh, skipped out into the waiting room so that we can individually discuss. I hope so. Can the host put us all in the waiting room? Two different waiting rooms. Uh, sure, sir. Doing it. Are we are we still waiting to get moved or should we? Oh yeah, and I I now see a pop. Uh, the breakout room has been created. No, uh, okay. Uh, we need a separate breakout room for uh, me and Shruti. Ah uh, yes, doing it. Uh, yeah. Mehak, do you want to speak to Mr. Mediator right now, or do you want to shift to this separate breakout room? Uh, we wish to go to a separate breakout room. Okay. Sure.
Is it possible to create the breakout room? Uh, yes, doing it. I'm uh, doing okay. it. Okay. It's going to take more 30 seconds. Okay. So I guess the three minutes of the break are already over. Can you hear me? Yes. You're back in, you're back in joint session with the media. Okay, I can't hear you somehow. Blake, Hello? can you hear me now? Ms. Fisher, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can okay. hear you now. Uh, we are missing one person. Yes, we're still missing Elia, it seems. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, I am. Uh, please accept okay. the invitation for the broadcast room. Okay, so. Thank you so much for giving us that time um, in private. Um, still one person, one person. Is Ali still with us? I can't see Ali. I also can't see uh, Mahak right now. Okay. I did, it seems they have been uh, back into the breakout room. Yeah, I, I've been asked to move to a breakout room as well. Okay, so maybe I, we just do yeah, that for a second. Us to ship them to the breakout rooms. Thus, we have shifted them to the breakout rooms. And we have invited you also to shift to the breakout rooms. Do you guys want to speak to the mediator right now? So uh, whoever, whoever is administering this, it would be helpful if all of the four participants could come back into the joint mediation session. They are. Thank you. Okay, still we're all back now, right? Yes. No, yes, yes. no, I'm still missing one person. No, we're all here. Okay, all right. So I trust I'll trust that you are. Okay, so uh, uh, Miss Fisher, would you like to give us some feedback from uh, that private meeting? Yes, thank you for giving out that time. So um, I just really wanted to double check with my lawyer because I wasn't sure if I got everything that we just discussed. And um, you have to understand that um, discussing the losses and invoices, the most important point for me is to be able to pay my farmers and to take responsibility. And if we now agree that I, that we weigh up the losses and the, the invoices and then also um, expand the period where you pay me, I can't give my farmers anything. And that's just not going to happen for me. This is nothing I would be happy with. I, I really need to ensure that I can pay my farmers um, the sooner the better. Um, so we have to find a way that this is going to happen. And I'm completely fine to, to arrange for the future that we um, come up with business models that we can that we can work this out and and work the losses out and to be able to to recover as a business both of us but for now I really need to pay my farmers so this is something we just have to work out and this is why okay. I can't agree to cover half of the costs and to weigh up the invoices that I'm counting on this is just not going to happen for me. Okay, so ra rather than uh, Eco Imports responding to that, um, you know, during my opening, I asked you to allow me to be guardian of the process, and you agreed to that. Um, you know, from my experience, I, you know, I have every sense that you can come to a commercial agreement in respect of your own losses and in respect of the outstanding invoice. Um, but for that to happen, I will have to spend some time privately working with each party. And then we're going to have to have some reflection and another discussion about that. But we're not going to go any further with that now, right? because they are, they are positions that you have each got and your positions aren't the same position. They're different positions. So uh, we only have uh, just over 10 minutes left together. So what I suggest is that we just draw a deep breath. And again, we sit silently for one minute. And then after the one minute, you have a conversation about what a future working relationship would look like. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. So one minute, I will tell you and we can start to talk again.
So, you know, I have every sense that we would be moving forward into another uh, joint mediation session, and I'll be spending some time before that with each of the parties. But in the 10 minutes that we have left, um, I'm hoping that you would have a, a blue sky conversation, a vision as to what a future working relationship might look like for both of you. What do you want that? What do you want yes. that relationship to look like? Yeah, so, I mean, I already shared in my opening statement, and I think we totally agree on that, um, Ali, that we really support the Green Food brand. And I think we took, we should make that um, our focus for our future relationship again and make that happen. And for this to happen, I think we have to face what um, Tim touched upon in his opening statement already, that there are only certain products that are now certified still. And I think we, we, should, we should really focus on these um, products and build a business around that and also make sure that obviously the tariffs costs and all of that are taken into account. And from my opinion, Northland shilling is not a currency that you can count on now. So we definitely have to find a currency that we work with um, that is more stable and um, have diff have um, regular meetings and talk about price increases, um, price drops and adapt to it. So these, I think I really have a lot of ideas how to how we can make it happen in the future. Also about the law that applies. I think these are all points we really need to discuss in our future mediation sessions. Um, what do you think, Ali? I agree what you said, but I would like to add two things. I would also like to discuss the product range of Green Food. I would like to expand it and then about the price adjustment of the products as well as the cost. And then also I would like to, as uh, Mehek has already stated, that I would like to add an ADR clause in our future agreement. And then also a forced majority clause in the future agreement. And other legal options can be explored by Mehek on my behalf. But these are the things I would like to primarily focus on. Absolutely, you, I think. And uh, I completely agree with what Blake has pointed out. And I think that one minute has helped us to, uh, to put the vision more clear as to how we want to go about it. Ultimately, it's the uh, green, food farm, uh, green food brand that matters. We want to take it ahead. Uh, whatever the differences are, we are uh, very much willing to work it out. Uh, we, 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 are, we, we are more than welcome to your suggestions also. And in the future mediation sessions, we can work, up out, work out on how we want to go ahead with our uh, future transactions, basically. I think we can continue part of that in, in this yes. meeting still, so we have some time left. And I'm, I'm really happy also to, to hear you, Ali, talk about the product ranges. That is one of, uh, of Blake's bigger concerns. And, and concern is also that she must focus on the certified organic uh, products under the new standard that was imposed under the preferred trading state agreement. And that, to be specific, only represents roughly 40% of last year's value. So I think it'd be a pretty early to, to talk about product range extension as our product range is currently being limited again. And I think that's something you'll have to consider uh, when further discussing your visions for the future. So may I just yeah, thank you. Are, are, are you stating as a matter of fact that uh, based on your previous business arrangement, the previous volume of business, that 40% of last year could happen this year without any imposition of tariffs or without any delays? Is that, is that a fact? That would be my evaluation yes. of the circumstances, yes. And is, is that a, a eco-imports understanding as well? Yes. Okay, so what, what, does that, what does that do for you, 40% to continue with 40% now? I mean, from my point of view, this is really great. Um, this is just something we can ensure and which we won't face challenges with. Um, and we just have to figure out, I mean, we can still provide you with the other 60% and we can work out how to make that happen for now and then have a transition period of say six months where we, we can um, make sure that farmers deliver us only the products we need and that we can deliver you 
only the certified products so that we really focus on that branch. And then of course we can talk about expansions, but I also think we have to see what products fall under the certified label. So I think this is something we definitely can like work. I think Blake, that's really great also to, to pick up on, on Ali's concern about the quality that she really wants to ensure that. And I think maybe you too as business people can explore how you may be able to market with that, with this only certified organic products are delivered and sold by green food. Maybe that's something you might want to explore. Okay, yes, so yes. Uh, we only have um, just a few minutes left. And um, in terms of process, you know, I, I'm going to contact each of you privately. And I, you know, I, I have a shopping list of things that I want to discuss. The money is one, uh, uh, and we, we can deal with that. Um, but from each party's perspective, uh, it would be helpful if either Ms. Fisher or um, uh, Tim or if uh, Ms. Riley or Mahak could summarize uh, what they want to do going forward. So I, I can start. Um, I, I definitely want to um, check with um, Tim, because you touched upon the ADR clause, and um, I just want to discuss with him what we need to cover in the next contract to, be, to make sure that we won't end up in a position like that again. And I also have to um, talk to my community, to the farmers that provide me with the products, um, how long it would take to have a transition um, to make that possible, because this is just not on me to, to decide. Um, and I would obviously also work out um, the money problem. Um, I, I definitely have to review that um, and see what options we have and discuss that with you, Neil, as well in a private session um, in order to prepare for our next session together. So these are really the concrete steps I will, will take um, in the next weeks. Thank you, Blake. Um, I think I don't have anything to add to, to that summary at this stage, but as it's quite a list of points, I think it would be prudent to schedule the next mediation session for some time in a week or so that's that we have sufficient time to also consult with Niall and uh, um, but now I'm happy to hear uh, what you, Ali, and, and Mohak uh, want to prepare. I, I I think Blake has covered almost all the points that we discussed, apart from uh, the point of a stable currency that we need to discuss upon, uh, which currency should we use. Uh, use. And secondly, also uh, regarding the governing laws of the contract, uh, after after Northland backing out, let, I, I what I would suggest is let's uh, let's uh, stick to UN Convention for International Sale of Goods provisions to be governed. And uh, you can, of course, uh, Blake, discuss it with your counsel, and I will discuss it with Ali regarding the losses part that how, how maybe we can come out with one or two proposals, how we can deal with the losses that both of us have suffered. And you can come out with your own proposals, and then we can uh, figure a way out of it. Okay, so in my introduction, you know, I talked about five stages introduction. I talked about information exchange, option generation, negotiation, and conclusion, uh, there's been very good information exchange. Um, right at the very end, um, I, I heard a, a creative option being added to the pot, which was uh, the UN convention. Um, so um, you have been very uh, forthright with each other. Uh, I think that you are good business partners and I have every confidence that you're going to find a, you know, a productive, profitable, socially responsible business relationship going forward. So thank you for the time that you spent with me today. And uh, I will be in contact with each of you shortly. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Neil, for your time. Okay, so uh, the mediation is now, uh, the mediation, the allocated hour is now finished. So um, it's for uh, Shamir to take back control if, if he wants to ask questions or uh, any of the people who've been watching want to ask questions. Um, the four mediation participants and I are very happy to answer them. Uh, Neil, uh, first of all, uh, let me thank you all uh, for taking out this time and have, you know, showing to the participants a wonderful uh, performance of how uh, mediation 
process takes place, especially from an international perspective. Um, it was really very interesting to see the you know various stages of uh, respective roles of each party and the councils and the mediator. How uh, you know as a mediator you have to. Uh, take the things under control when they are going somewhere on a, maybe on a different footing or and also to seek clarification so that, you know, the parties are also, um, all, all the parties in fact are at the same page. So there, there are no confusions or misunderstandings and strategically use, uh, you know, that one minute of uh, silence or thinking, so these, these are some strategies, you know, uh, from a mediator's perspective. And second, I mean, definitely from the uh, party's perspective, I think the participants did learn the, the, the attitude which, which uh, a party and the mindset with which a party uh, uh, should be coming uh, in mediation, you know, on a, on a very positive way, the, 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 the demeanor, the way of speaking out, Though you put up your case, but there is a way to put up a case though, so that it doesn't, you know, uh, uh, seems like any kind of, uh, um, you know, annoyance to the other side or as if you are uh, so authoritative that you, you are a demanding party, but at the same time, you are putting forth your case. So that's, that's how uh, a party should be behaving. And from the council's perspective, both Tim and Mac, you know, were equally, uh, uh, you know, effective to put forward and take care of their respective clients' interests from the legal side. Though if there were there were a couple of legal issues involved, but the way you know it has been put so um, in a in a very very uh, courteous and holistic way. Uh, so this is this is the uh, this is the way what a role of a council in a mediation should be. So I think what we did in the in our earlier sessions, everything has now been shown to you live on live today through this uh, mock mediation. And Neil, I think um, uh, a special thanks to you to uh, to you know show the participants. Uh, to make them learn the nuances of a good mediator. And so again, thank you all of you for putting up such a wonderful performance. I am very sure that this will help the participants in, in their uh, coming uh, moot event and they, they would get this uh, immense amount of learning of how to do a mediation and how to go into a mediation process as such. And um, yes, now I think um, uh, before, you know, uh, we allow the participants or anyone uh, sharing thoughts or maybe some questions, let me just give a very brief introduction of uh, two key people here um, to, uh, to make this happen. Um, in fact, three, I would say. And, uh, one, uh, the two are, the first two are Alexandra, uh, who was there as uh, Mr. Blake, and Andrea. I think she's also here, if I'm, uh, if I'm right. Yeah. So um, Andrea and Alexandra are the co-founder of uh, International Mediation Campus of extremely important and wonderful initiative by these two young uh, people to help you understand what mediation to train to train you into a, a good mediator and i think those of you who would like to pursue this as a career maybe not as a career but to understand this process must go for this training be part of im campus you will learn immense amount of knowledge from that so thank you alexandra and thank you uh, andrea for making this happen today uh, and supporting us for this coming to india offline for the first time and we are sure that next time it will be in person uh, i assure you that and the second uh, key person to make this happen is mehek uh, rathi Mehek is a practicing lawyer in Delhi and she's a co-founder of a platform called ADR Hawk. Uh, another very wonderful initiative uh, 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 in our country uh, from her and uh, the co-founder to, you know, to promote 
ADR mechanism as such, which is the need of our for our country. So those again, uh, those of you who would like to you know uh, pursue this as a career or have the knowledge, please uh, join, be part of these two uh, very important initiatives. Uh, both from domestic and international perspective. And I am very sure that you all will gain uh, from uh, being part of this. So thank you very much. Uh, and of course, thank you to Neil and Tim. Uh, though uh, personally, I, 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 uh, I don't know you, uh, but I would request Alexandra to at least uh, give their introduction, please. Yes, well, maybe you, you want to introduce yourselves, um, Neil and Tim. It's really great. Uh, Neil jumped in as our, um, originally our mediator couldn't make it due to health problems. And I was really grateful to hear from Neil two days ago that he's, he's free and he's happy to jump in. So I would hand over the word for, to you um, first. So I, I am Niall Lawless. I am from the north of Ireland. So I carry two passports. I have a, an Irish passport and a UK passport. So uh, I have not been adversely affected uh, by Brexit and my sons have not been adversely affected because they also can have two passports. Um, I'm a construction and engineering professional and uh, any mediations I get involved with are normally construction and engineering professionals. Um, I've been appointed by the ICC uh, in disputes uh, uh, up to about 55 million US dollars. Um, last January, I was in Doha, state of Qatar, and I had a, you know, first communicated with the parties in November. Then during December, there was a, a quite a, a rigorous a exchange of information, a limited to supposedly one labor arch file, it grew to two labor arch files. Um, I went to Doha, I spent one full day from eight o'clock until uh, about nine o'clock with one party the next day, a similar meeting, and then we came together for two full days. And at nine o'clock uh, on the fourth day from being $55 million apart, the parties were about $1 million apart. And I knew that with a further exchange of information within a day or so, they would compromise that dispute. Um, one of the things that I always do is I always give the parties a breakdown of what their litigation or arbitration costs are going forward and uh, that's got a really good way of focusing the mind. And the reason I'm saying that is because uh, mediation really does work. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Tim? So hi, hi again, everyone. Um, so I was really grateful to be a part of this. I'm still currently studying law in Germany. I'm a third and a half year law student here. Um, and I've participated in uh, the ICC competition a couple of times now. I've also had the pleasure of uh, uh, doing a course to become a certified mediator at uh, Andrea's company as a stipendiate. So uh, that, that was a great opportunity, uh, which also taught me a lot of qualities that you're not taught in law school. Um, so as to be uh, a bit more courteous in explaining your client's view um, or positions. Uh, that was very helpful. And I think for, for all of the law students that are participating in your competition, uh, it's, it's a great way to, to you know, look a bit outside the scope of law and it will really also make you a better human being to some extent, certainly. And it's just, just overall nice to, to be able to negotiate in respecting uh, the other party as well at the same time. And I think that's just what mediation can do. And I think it's going to be a powerful tool moving forward. Um, there's so many advantages to the whole process. Um, and I think it's also great that you set up this kind of demonstration for your competing teams as well, because it's also very nice. I would have wished the ICC would do something like this every once in a while for the participating teams. So that as a participant, you know what you're kind of aiming for. Um, so I think we also did quite a good job uh, today, uh, Alex, and also Mahak and uh, Shruti. So thank you also uh, to you two uh, for, for joining us for this mock session. Uh, Shruti, uh, would you just uh, introduce yourself also, please? Shruti, are you there? Um, Mac, can you do that, please? 
Shruti, I think she has some network issues. Uh, Shruti Gupta is basically a fifth year law student and uh, she's working with us uh, with ADR Hawk as the manage- managing director. She's managing all the affairs of the organization really well and we are looking forward to have more sessions or uh, more like sessions and work together uh, to know each uh, know you all better and i would love the feedback how it went and it was of course uh, amazing working with you all. i mean uh, doing this mock session with you all thank you neil alexandra andrea tim and of course um, sir um, may i just request you to uh, unmute andrea and, and if let her have few words to speak yes. andrea please <laughs> Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to watch this um, mediation and Neil, uh, especially this one minute of silence. It is so helpful, right? It, wasn't it like an experience also for you too, sitting in front of, of a computer and then within one minute, there is so much pressure falling down and other ideas are created. So I think that was that was a brilliant demonstration also about reframing, giving different per- perspective, what is a part in our mediation practice. Um, I'm Andrea, I'm uh, um, the founder of Consensus. Uh, it's a company in Germany. We're doing mediation uh, on one hand, uh, mediation service. And on the other hand, uh, we are providing mediation training. And uh, maybe let me share this, uh, this uh, story with you. Uh, Alex and I met in Paris at the ICC uh, competition. I'm a professional there. I'm a judge um, since uh, three years. And Alex uh, was a student so we met and since then we started to work together and now we have even co-founded our international um, mediator campus and also Tim I met uh, in Paris and as he said we are trying our company is trying to give um, some scholarships to some students uh, that are participating in in such competition or are very uh, interested in really becoming um, a mediator or understand better what mediation and also like in comparison to negotiation is so um, that is very short uh, for myself I'm also researching on uh, mediation I'm, uh, and especially about emotions in negotiation and uh, mediation. So uh, thank you so much, Andrea. I think that 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 was really inspiring, and this will definitely uh, give the participants uh, one more reason to to keep you know attending these kind of conferences because this may give them this kind of platform as you and Andrea, Alex and Tim you know, uh, are working today. So definitely, and these kind of things do happen. I have seen this, you know, myself, because I have been coaching, I have been mentoring, I have been sitting as judges in so many international moot events. Th- these kind of association, collaboration, you know, networking do happen. So I think uh, this is what uh, uh, one of the most advantage, best advantage of participating in these kind of events not even in moods, but in, in such conferences, you know, you get to network. This is, this is how you build up your, you know, your career, your associations, yeah, your connects. So keep this flow on to all the participants and um, uh, very, sh- very soon we will be uh, announcing a very important uh, news uh, for you all who are interested to uh, learn about mediation and ADR. So keep watching this space. Thank you so much. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you, Samir. Bye. Sir, over to you. Thank you so much, everyone. It was a uh, great meeting you, so much, you uh, all. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Neil. Thank you so much, Ms. Tim, Mr. Tim. Thank you so much, Mehak uh, and uh, Andrea. I'm the host and director of this law school. I'm extremely delighted to uh, have you all here today. And uh, it is extremely, extremely wonderful experience to host you all. And uh, it is completely different. I mean, uh, we have been conducting mooting competitions since many years. And I have the experience of uh, hosting mooting since the last 20 years. But uh, today's session has ma- marked the difference in 
uh, the uh, the way simulation has to be uh, conducted in the law schools and how uh, we can make difference in the uh, in the in the life of the young lawyers not only by way of giving them opportunity to stand on a platform and uh, speak and uh, share their uh, knowledge and uh, their skills in mediation and arbitration but also providing them an extra edge uh, by giving uh, uh, a session which is uh, lively which is uh, uh, conducted through uh, the experts like uh, uh, mr nial and experts like uh, uh, andrea and 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 in the presence of uh, uh, the renowned people like uh, samit sir and 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 someone who has uh, practiced it uh, in last many years and decades and and and, and shruti and uh, the colleague were extremely good so i personally feel that uh, it's kind of going back to law school it's a great learning experience for me and for my and i and i obviously feel that all the participants who are from all across the world all teams all participant who are from all across the india around 100 teams who are going to compete from uh, next friday they must have got something extra they must have got something something new and i see that this kind of uh, sessions are going to be the norm of the competitions way ahead which is set in motion by uh, samir sir and with the cooperation of all of you i am extremely delighted and extremely thankful to all of you for your time for your presence for your support for your conducting such a nice uh, simulation and mock session for all of us and i hope all the team members must have been genuinely benefited and extremely delighted to uh, see this session today and participate thank you so very much samit sir uh, from the core of our of my heart and from my law school from all participants all volunteers this is this is uh, an experience on top thank you sir thank you all right bye bye take care bye uh, take care, one thing uh, one thing at least uh, we can plan out that next year uh, we can we can uh, host uh, the iim campus team here in india yes sir we are we are uh, giving uh, invitation to all of you who are professionals to be a judge all of you who are uh, able to bring teams from the your law schools you are all welcome any time and one more thing when sami sir has said any time you land in india anyone be it uh, uh, i'm i'm i mean it is open to shruti who is living in delhi any time you visit greater noida this is your college this thank is thank you college. so much any thank you so much for the kind words as well always always mr tim Good Thank luck you, with the competition, Thank everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for uh, you know providing this kind of uh, platform to the young generation. Uh, you know to to learn the nuances of uh, ADR and mediation, especially. And we look forward to a very healthy and successful competition in the next week. Thank, Thank you. you. All so the much, best sir. to the Thank all the participants. Thank you. Thank you.